Hi everybody, I'm going to be going over problem 3.6 from the bingo card homework and this is my solution that I came up with. So to summarize the problem, it's talking about a dog running through a field and we're given some of the information about the average acceleration, like the magnitude is 0.45 meters per second squared and the direction is 31.0 degrees above the horizontal. So we have that. We're also given at time one, which equals 10 seconds, the velocity in the x component, the x component of the velocity is 2.6 meters per second, and the y component is negative 1.8 meters per second. So that's all the information we're given about this dog running, but we need to find the x and y components of the velocity at time two, which equals 20 seconds. And so we're given acceleration, we're gonna to have to go from average acceleration to uh, velocity components. And then after that, we'll do part B says, what are the magnitude and direction of the dog's velocity? So we'll have to do that. And then sketching those velocity vectors at time one and time two. So we'll start with A and then just go down the list. So. Sorry, that was from my last run. We have the, we need to find the X and Y components. But since we've been given an average acceleration, we can't just go straight to the velocity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the information we have about the average acceleration and break the acceleration down into components. And then from there, we can go into the velocity. So to do that, let's start with X. And so we'll have A, of x equals, and remember that this is just the average acceleration, so it's the overall average. So what we'll do here is we'll use the magnitude, which is 0 0.45 meters per second squared, and then since it's x, we'll use cosine of And it's 31 degrees. And so that's the information we've been given at the beginning of the problem. So when we do this in our calculator, we end up with 0 0.386 meters per second squared. So A, X. So that's the X component of the average acceleration. So now we'll do the exact same thing for the average acceleration with Y. So that's, we'll draw a little line, a y equals 0 0.45 sine, since it's y now, we use sine, and then it's the same angle, 31 degrees. So when you do that, a y equals, just plug that into your calculator, we end up with 0 0.232 meters per second squared. All right, so now we've broken down the average acceleration into components, which is good. But, like the question asked, it wants the x, y components of the velocity at time two, not the average acceleration. So this is important part. So now what we need to do is we need to go from the average acceleration to the velocity. And the way we do that is through the acceleration and velocity relationship. And so what that is, is the average acceleration. So we'll just call, and since we're already in components, we'll stay in components. So we'll just say AX equals, and if you remember that all acceleration is, is a change in velocity over a change in time. So that's just delta VX over delta T. And then it's the same thing for y, or the y component. It's a y equals delta v y over delta t. So these are our relationships, and this is how we're going to find 
the velocities from the acceleration and from the information that we've already been given. So now what we need to do is rearrange because we're trying to find velocity, the second velocity, so vx2 and vy2. So the way to do that is, remember, delta just means a change in. And so that'd be, for example, in the x, it would be dx2 minus vx1. And so we can expand that a little bit. So it'll be ax equals dx2 minus vx1 over t2 minus t1. And then it's the same thing with the y's over here. So it's going to be a y equals v y2 minus v y1 over t2 minus t1. So here's our relationship between the velocity and acceleration. So now what we do is, since we're looking for the vx2 and the vy2, we're just going to manipulate this equation to isolate those two variables. So all we'll do is we'll multiply both sides by the delta t, so we'll end up with a x times t2 minus t1 equals v x2 minus v x1. And I guess I won't even say vx1 and vy1 because we already have it up here as vx and vy. So those are the same thing, so I'll take those off just to keep everything similar, just to not get mixed up. So now what we do is we just add vx to both sides and then we have our isolated variable. So that's it for that. So I'll do the same thing with y. So a y equals times t2 minus t1 equals vy2 minus vy1. And so now I'll get my chair since this is getting kind of low. So now we have these two equations. So now what we need to do is like I said, also add this over. So vx2 equals ax t2 minus t1 plus vx. And then the other side is the same. It's going to be ay t2 minus t1 plus vy equals Actually, I'll rewrite that with vy2 in the front, just to keep it easier. So vy2 equals ay t2 minus t1 plus vy. So now all we do, so we're done. We've isolated the variable that we want to solve for. So now all we need to do is plug in the information that we've already been given. So we have the vx and vy already, and we have the time two and the time one. So now all we need to do, oh, and we also have the acceleration in the different components, which is all we need. So we'll start with x. So vx2 equals ax, which we already know is 0 0.386. times, and then t2 minus t1 is just 20 minus 10, so I'll save a little bit of time and just put 10, plus vx from the problem is 2.6. So now we just solve that in our calculator, and we end up with 6.46 meters per second. So 
So that is our velocity in the, the x component of the velocity at time two, which is at 20 seconds. So that one's good for part A. So now we just need to finish up with the y component and then we're done with part A. So this equals vy2 equals ay, which we solve for 0 0.232 times, once again, we'll just write 10, 20 minus 10 is 10, 10, plus vy, which is given to us in the problem in the first place, negative 1.8. And once we plug that into the calculator, we end up with 0 0.52 meters per second. All right, so this is part A. We're totally finished with that. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, cause we're gonna need to keep these values to use in our next steps. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, since I'm running out of board space, I'm gonna erase this, but I'll keep these values because these are important for finding parts B and C. So, let me grab my towel. And so we'll write, we'll write these values up here to keep them safe. So V x2 equals 6.46 meters per second. All right, so we've got those all safe, so they're not going anywhere. enough space now to part B. So just over B again it says what are the magnitude and direction of the dog's velocity? So we'll use what we just came up with and also magnitude we use the Pythagorean theorem to find what that magnitude is of that vector. So the magnitude I'll just write it down so magnitude equals the square root of vx2 squared plus vy2 squared. And so with that, now we just plug in the values that we just found. So this is why I said we needed to keep those because we're not quite done with them yet. So we just plug those in, so it equals the square root of 0 0.52 squared plus 6.46 squared. So when you plug that in the calculator, you end up with 6.48 meters per second. So that's the magnitude of the vector at time equals 20 seconds. And now we also have to do the direction. And with direction, we know that theta equals the inverse tangent of, and I always mix this one up, so I made sure to write it in my notes, vy2 over vx2. For some reason, I always want to put x on top, so had to double check that one. Once again, we just plug in the values we've already found. So that's going to equal the inverse tangent of 0 0.52 over 6.46. So when we do that up in our calculator, we end up with 4.6 degrees.
So now what we have for time two, we have the magnitude and the velocity, which is really nice. Now what we need to do is we need to also find the magnitude and the direction of the velocity at time one. Because here we're given the uh, magnitude and the direction of the acceleration, but we need to find it for the velocity at time one. So luckily we already have these values here. And so we just do the same thing, but instead of the second values for time two, we use the first values for time one. And so, so these are for T2. And then to do it for T1, we just do the same thing. So the square root, so the magnitude equals the square root of, and I'll just write them straight in since we already have the equation out here. I'll just fill them in as I go. So 2.6 squared plus negative 1.8 squared. So we plug that into everything and we end up with 3.16 meters per second. So we have that now, and then we also need to find the direction of the velocity. So we just do the same thing. So theta equals the inverse tangent of, we'll do y over x, so negative 1.8 over 2.6. So now we just plug that into our calculator and we end up with negative 34.7 degrees. Remember these are for time is 10 seconds and it's time one. So now what we do is we'll draw the, those vectors. So, and we'll use an x, y coordinate plane. So first I'll draw, the first, we'll just start with V, X, and V, Y. So here's our coordinate plane. Here's our plus Y, plus X. So we know that this is actually a negative direction. So it's gonna be something like this. negative 34.7 degrees, and we also know that the magnitude is 3.16. So that is our T1 vector. So now we'll do our T2. We'll just draw another plane just to keep them separate, keep them easier to see. And so this one, so remember this is 10, eh, I guess that's x, y, but it doesn't matter. So x and y, this one is gonna be like this, 4.6 degrees with a magnitude of 6.48. So from the graph, we can kind of see a little bit easier what's going on. So the magnitude at time two this is T2, this is it, T1. So we know that the magnitude at T2 is much higher than at time one. And we also know that the directions are quite different as well, where at time one, it's actually going in a negative Y direction. The velocity is in the velocity in time two is going at a positive y, both are positive x. So that's parts A, B, and C on problem 3.6. Thanks for watching.